the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and, and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at, a, at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents, and see, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for all that we have and all that we are. Now, at this hour, 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, great God, are our rock and our salvation. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God. Well, here we go again, a text about the end times that makes me look around after I say the gospel of the Lord, wondering whether anyone else noticed that the end of this gospel text doesn't sound like good news. Like for some, the results of the election doesn't sound like good news. The increase of COVID-19 cases doesn't sound like good news. Holidays without large gatherings and time with family doesn't sound like good news. Yet we try to find the good in all of these things. The good thing about the election is it's over, I think. Months of ads and emails and incessant noise about who, what, when, and how of the election will eventually be drowned out and we will be able to hopefully move forward. The good news about the coronavirus is that there is positive news about the possibility of a vaccine being available to all of us by next year. And the good news about the holidays is that they will come and we will gather via Zoom and social distancing, we will wear our masks and by the grace of God, get to do something different than that next year. And I even found the good news in our scripture text. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. Do you know what a talent is? No, not the talent someone has for singing or dancing or writing or anything like that. In this context, a talent is currency, money, what you trade for what you want. A talent or a tantalon is worth 30 bars of gold. Imagine it, 30 bars of gold. So the good news in this text is that the master left his servants in charge of an abundance of wealth. The good news is that the master trusted his servants with what belonged to the master, left them and they had no idea when, what day or hour that the master would return. Many pastors have used this parable to talk about stewardship and how we have not been good stewards of all that God has given us and how the church's survival depends on us being better stewards of our wealth and rendering to God what is God. The text has been used to talk about how we responsibly invest in a capitalist system, but I'll save that for another day. This morning, I wanna talk about the great abundance that the master leaves to his servants as it relates to the abundance that God, through Jesus, gives to all of us. As Lutheran Christians, we can recite very quickly and easily that we are justified by grace as a gift apart from works of the law and move along as, as those who have nothing to do in response to this great gift. This has led to what has been called Lutheran quietism, or Lutheran's ability not to get involved in things of the world. Or, as I said last week, what Dietrich Bonhoeffer would call cheap grace. In his book, The Cost of Discipleship, he tells us that cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without forgiveness, absolution without personal confession, cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. The servants are entrusted with the master's wealth until the master returns. The master lets the servants live for a considerable amount of time with this tremendous wealth. The master didn't tell them what to do with the talents or how to do it. When the master returns, the first and second servants are told, enter the joy of your master. They have done something, used, invested, took advantage of, increased what was given them, and the master is pleased. I'm not going to spend much time worrying about that, what that last servant does with his talent. 
What I'm more concerned with is what we do with ours. This parable is about the end times. The people of Jesus' day were living in anticipation of Jesus' return and spreading the good news of God in the meantime. That is discipleship. This is what it means to follow Jesus the Christ, to not know the day or hour, no matter how long it will be, and live in the costly grace of God in the meantime. This grace is costly, Bonhoeffer says, because it costs God the life of his son, the life of Jesus stretched out on a cross for you and me. They thought the return would be quick, and yet we are still waiting. So what do we do with the abundance that God has given us in the meantime? The two servants knew that the wealth of their master could be increased. Do we know that love could be increased? Justice could be increased. Kindness could be increased. Giving could be increased. And they increased the wealth of their master. The third servant is fearful of receiving this abundance. He doesn't live in the grace of God. He simply buries all that he is given in the ground. I wonder if we understand that all that God has entrusted us with, with grace, forgiveness, love, mercy, all the world we have been entrusted with. And everything has been so that we can make a difference for and in the world. That this is life and death and our engagement in the world is necessary. Wouldn't you be angry if you knew that an important leader was reluctant to speak out or act in a crisis when other lives are at stake? And lives are at stake. So we increase what is given us by the master. We increase love. We increase justice. We increase mercy. We increase kindness. We respond to God's abundant, costly grace by spreading the good news of God in a world that is so very troubled. People of God, what will we do with the great abundance that God has given us? Well, I pray that we multiply it two times and five times and 10 times and a 100 times as we enter the joy of our master. May it be so. Now let us pray in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.